Hello, something a little bit different today. I've got plenty of these red, green, blue strip LED things hanging around and I wanted to do a little project with them, make some use of them. So I found a couple of picture frames and I thought maybe it would be nice if I could put the LED lighting around the edge on the inside and take these pictures out and uh, I don't know, just put some sort of white covering over it and turn them into light boxes that change colour. Yeah, that's kind of interesting but boring. Now this one has got red, green and blue which is separate and I kind of think that's great if you wanted to make a fairground type of lighting thing because the colours are separate and they don't mix too well. However, this type has the red, the green and the blue all in the same module if you wish. So there's more chance that the light will be mixed at source there. So therefore, when you put this onto something like white, what you get here is red, green, blue, red, green, blue, all the way along. But here, you get a white light. So therefore, that's going to be white, or whatever colours you decide to choose, say purple. There you go, you've got your blue and your red on there, but here you've got purple because the light is being mixed in a smaller area. So yeah, I'm going to take one of these picture frames apart and make it slightly thicker, box it in a way, uh, put some sort of cover over the top and see if I can make a lighting box that I can control by voice. Might be useful, I don't know. Let's see how it goes. So I found some nice thin strips of wood and I've cut them to size so that they will fit inside the frame and hold the glass as well. The only problem is I think it would have been better if this was slightly thinner because when you close it up that's what you should get a nice sort of slim box but you can just kind of see the, wo the wooden ends there. So yeah even though I've cut the baking paper a little bit bigger to try and capture it on the edges. By the time you put it all together in here, let me show you, because I have kind of done this before, you sort of trap the paper in the edges like so. It still looks not too good. Flip that over and yeah it's okay, it will work. It'll It'll do the job of diffusing the light that comes through it, but you've got to trap the paper over the edges. And what happens, if you can see, we well, probably can't see on camera, but just about here, the baking paper's already starting to fall from behind the glass. So obviously the best way to do that is to do away with the baking paper altogether. Even though I've done that in the past, but what I've done, I've laid it between two pieces of glass, and that's much better. But what I've done anyway is I've just got a piece of this plastic that you can get from most hardware stores and I've cut a piece of that to fit behind the glass. And that is a much better option. But if you can't get that, yes, just play with the baking paper and try and capture it around the edges and pull it up. But that looks... Uh, more of a flat surface under there. So yeah, that's that bit done. I thought about putting white paper on there or white tape, but I've just found this aluminium tape. And I think maybe if I actually stick this down, that's gonna be better. Anything to help reflect the light is a good thing. There you go, that's nice and reflective. And this is just uh, aluminium tape that you can, again, buy from hardware stores. So now I'm gonna put these edges on and what you mustn't forget, oh I almost forgot, is you need to cut a little bit of a groove in one of the pieces of wood before you nail it into place because you need the wires to come through of course. So when you've placed the LED strips, what you've got to do is connect all the positives together, all the reds, the greens and the blue, from one strip to the other. 
and it, it doesn't really matter where you do it as long as the green is connected to the green is connected to the green and so on and so forth all the way down here I kind of originally wanted to put them all down one side but it was getting a bit close and a bit busy so I decided there's plenty more solder points that I could use so I just basically jumped in and connected all the reds, the greens, the blues and the pluses. So I'm just to uh, test that this actually works. So all the reds, all the greens and all the blues. Brilliant. Now then, this is a piece of plastic that I've cut out to sort of fit over the top of that. But rather than just make it into a light box, I'll, I'll just show you as a light box, which is quite nice. No, it's not going to come on now. There we go. So yeah, a basic sort of a uh, light box. It doesn't work too good with the overhead camera because you can kind of see where all the LEDs are in there in some sort of a matrix. But uh, yeah, it, it will work as a light box. Hang it on the wall and, you know, it gives plenty of light down here. Very nice. Uh, but if I put the original glass back in, and then I actually print out a logo or whatever you want to print out, but print onto that overhead uh, projection plastic. You can then add whatever you like to this. So if I kind of print one out with YouTube on there and one with my name and the little mouse logo, the mouse wearing the headphones, that's my kind of little logo. I've been using that as a, a sort of a signature for many many years since I was quite young so that's my kind of logo the mouse with the headphones on now put that piece over there and yeah very nice shows through put that piece back on there and there you have it how's that a nice sort of little logo that you can hang in the background make it change colors and things and yeah looks very pretty not great but uh, this was this is easy to make and you can just change those bits of plastic as and when you wish now I've got a few more of these uh, red green blue strip LEDs left over so I'm just gonna knock together a little bit of sort of I don't know if you want to call it artwork call it artwork yeah whatever so I've got another picture frame here with a made a bit of extra depth to it and I just had a dig around through my old components drawers and found some valves and the old transistors up to microchips up to surface mount components and I've always liked this chip here just move in a little bit this chip because the components in the center kind of remind me of the old Space Invaders logo so I kind of kept that chip for ages and always wondered what to do with it so what I've done there is it looks a bit homemade I know because I made it at home obviously but uh, this bit around the outside is some copper and I've cut it to the shape of a microchip and uh, with the with the eight pins on it and I've put the lighting actually on the insides here so it reflects nicely off all the valves and things and you notice this is kind of scrolling through colors it's sort of fading through all the colors and things that's very nice that's just by using one of these devices however I decided to push this a little bit further so this is the control I've been using for changing the colors and this is a Wi-Fi enabled controller now these only cost about nine UK pounds which is pretty cheap really and what you do is you set it up on your phone and then you can control it all with your phone or even better you can control it with uh, one of the Amazon devices I shan't say the word because uh, it might set off somebody else's so uh, devices here we go so I've called it panel and it's on blue at the moment and by Wi-Fi hopefully you can just change the colors over to green over to blue, over to orange, amber-ish. I don't know how good this is showing up on the TV screen, but 
you make a few of these things with your logos on and things for your YouTube videos and you can have them up in the background and uh, just control them and make them scroll and things. So I've set up this little Amazon device into this magic home thing here. It was really easy to set up actually. There's a QR code on the back and you just get that onto your phone and then you then connect the Amazon to that. I'm not going to say the word in case I set anybody else's off, so I will mute the, uh, the keyword out for this. But let's try it now anyway. So this is going to be controlled by this. So, muting. Make panel blue. Okay. Make panel green. Okay. It's easy peasy. So uh, yeah, it, it's working this and it's working this and I've got a couple more attachments on this thing. So I could make a couple more and just, I don't know, put them somewhere, put some on the shelf lighting or whatever and make it all change color. Also, if you change a couple of the pins over, the red for the green or whatever, as one of them comes up green, another one will come up blue or another one will come up red. So then when you're going through fades and things, they'll be changing different colours because you've only got the red and the green and the blue to, to play with, basically. But uh, yeah, I know that wasn't sort of synthesizer-ish stuff, which is what most of my videos are. But every now and again, I like to just mess about and do something completely different. And I've been wanting to do something like this to just have in the background there uh, with my name on it for the YouTube videos. So if you found that useful, please give us a thumbs up and go and make one yourself. They're dead easy. All the best. Thanks for watching. Bye bye. Make panel red. Okay.